morning we are talking about what I call divine compensation divine compensation it's the motivational christian lounge where i share all about christian motivation sermons and gospel reviews in order to pass important information to the teaching spoken for inspiration for knowledge and for the edification of the spirit soul and body kindly don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below sensation you will soon realize as we go on that god is a god of compensation God owes no man nothing. He pays back. God is a God of divine compensation. God is a God that gives rewards. This is a very interesting thing. And a mystery you must key into. Yesterday I had a very strange word from the Lord. Are you facing any kind of challenges or any problems? Then this sermon is exactly for you. Dr. Daniel Olukoya, the seer of the Mountain of Fire Ministries, talks about divine compensation. The man of God gave his first scriptural reading in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 29, from verse 17 to 21, whereby he talked about King Nebuchadnezzar, of how he was going to conquer Egypt. He said that he will give Nebuchadnezzar Egypt as his payment for all his services. Ezekiel chapter 29. This is a teaching session. We're going to look at plenty of scriptures. Ezekiel 29 from verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 29 verse 17. I know there will be somebody here this morning. The Lord will over answer your prayers. The amen of that person is not loud enough. Ezekiel 29, 17. And it came to pass in the seventh and twentieth year, in the first month, in the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus. Every head was made bald, every shoulder was pinned. Yet, with all this problem, all the wahala that he made, he had no wages, nor his army for Tyrus. For the service that he had served against it. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take a multitude, and take a spoil, and take a prey, and it shall be the wages for his army. A divine compensation for the trouble he had been through. I've given him the land of Egypt for his labor, wherewith he served against it, because he wrote for me said the Lord God. That was the story of Nebuchadnezzar. God energized Nebuchadnezzar to war against Tyre. And he besieged it for 13 years. Unfortunately for him, the long siege gave the people of Tyre, Tyre the opportunity to smuggle out most of their stuff. So by the time he took this place, there was nothing again. Everything was bare. He besieged it until head was made bald and shoulders were peeled. But when he got in, nothing. But he was on an assignment for the Almighty. The Lord said, okay, since you work for me, I must pay you back. You see, your compensation. Take over the land of Egypt. Take over everything that they have. God is a God of divine... First of all, what is divine compensation? As you all know, divine compensation has got very different meanings. First, divine compensation is for the Almighty God to open your books of remembrance. It also means to over-answer your prayers. Then it also means for God Almighty rewarding you for your past labors of love. It also means divine overpayment, that is, when God overpays you. It also means divine pampering, that is, when God begins to pamper you. It means to redeem what heaven owes you. It also means uncommon heavenly reward. Then it also means 
an award or an honor from God. Then lastly, it means divinely programmed to honor you. The man of God declared that where they had rejected you, you shall become a champion. Many years ago as a young graduate, I was doing some part-time work somewhere. They were paying me 300 naira, a lot of money in those days. And I was happy with it, teaching in the place. My friend was the head of the department at that time. All of a sudden, they, rem they removed my friend, they put another person. I was even happy because I thought the person they put there was my friend. The first day that he resumed duty, his first assignment was to sack me. <laughs> the first day, the first, immediately he sat down and that's it. The first thing he did, remove this man from here. I ran to my friend, my friend said, well, he's in charge, and there's nothing I can do, sorry about that. Well, I don't know what the man has against you, but he has removed you, he has removed you, he's the new head, there's nothing I can do. It was very painful, because there is a lot of calculation on that 300 naira. The calculation just collapsed like that. Well, I guess, I guess, I guess, praise God, and left. And I forgot about it totally. Not too long ago, somebody invited me to open a big complex. And to dedicate that complex to the glory of God. I arrived there. Who did I see at the gate? It was the man that sacked me that time. Now he was the one carrying the, the tray that contained the scissors for me to be cutting the thing. And I was say, ah, don't you know me again? I looked at him and said, yeah, are you here now? He said, yes. Yes, this is where I'm working now. So he was the one carrying the tray to follow me now. The man that sacked me many years ago. I pray for somebody here. Where they have rejected you? You shall become the champion. You shall become the champion. Don't ever think that anything you are doing for the Lord goes in vain. No. That's why it's a disaster when you come to the house of God and you do nothing. Nothing. You don't know what you are losing. Because may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and you're already out. Nothing. Nothing for God. Oh. You don't know what you are losing. Because when is compensation plan will get into operation, you will lose out. Some are standing here as ushers now. They will stand throughout the service. Some are in the choir. Five days in the week they are here. Some are playing instruments. Some are doing all kinds of things. Some in this church, they sit down and start thinking, Father, how can I bless this place? But to just come to a place of God, just, just come and go, come and go, nothing. You are losing the, the, the compensation plan of the Almighty. And it will be a dangerous thing to continue. The man of God also taught about Mark chapter 10 from verse 28, where Peter spoke to Jesus and told him that they have left everything to follow him. Then Jesus replied back to him, saying, I tell you that anyone who leaves home, or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and for the gospel will receive much more in this present age he will receive a hundred times more houses brothers sisters mothers children and fields and for sections as well and in the age to come he will receive eternal life so always know that everything you do for the Lord you shall certainly receive a reward, not in this world alone, but also in the world to come. Mark chapter 10, verse 28. I'm still on one point to point number one. That God is the God of compensation. That's the point I'm still making. Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Mark 10, 28. If you are say yes. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and we have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Please listen to this answer of Jesus. Some people will say, Hey, hey, me, hey, 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 yeah, I can't, ah, me, I can't marry a pastor. I can't be a pastor. Lie, lie, it's not possible. Ah, no, 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 no. I wait for offering before I wait. No, 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 no way. Ah, no, no, no. I don't want to do that kind of thing. Although this is your general pastor does not take salary because he does not need a salary. Amen. Aha. Because what the Lord does through his books is more than salary. So I don't take a salary. But some will say, ah, oh, no, 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 no
Peter said to Jesus, Say, We have left everything and we are now following you. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that have left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Not only that, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and land with persecution. But in the world to come, eternal life. There it is. So you shall receive your composition now and in the world to come. Ah, is it your reward is in heaven. Yes, there is a reward in heaven, but there is a reward now too. But there, there it is in the Bible. So you shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Then at the last day, eternal life. God, a God of divine compensation. Everything you do for him, you receive the reward. This is a very serious matter. And a lot of things that people don't understand about the Almighty and his compensation plan. So those who have left house, they left brother, they left sister, they went to serve God somewhere, he will certainly bless them. Not in this world alone, but in the world to come. I could remember when Mountain of Fire first started. That time we have something called the School of Mission. And people come, they want to go up, they want to go and minister. We say those who want to do mission work, they want to travel to go and preach the gospel, come. And generally plenty of people turned up on the first day. I normally give the first lecture. And my first lecture in those days is 42 reasons why you must not go. So, number one, you are going to miss your wife, your family, your children. Number two, where you are going, a lion may kill you. And you, they may not even get your flesh for burial because it's the tummy of the lion. Number three, no more overtime, milo, bomb vita, all those things. Finish. Number four, forget about air conditioning. You cannot even get a fan. Five, know that you are at the mercy of mosquitoes. And there may be no chloroquine for you to drink there. And I gave them 42 reasons why you should not go. By the next lecture, normally about 100, 120 will come for that first day. By the next lecture, they fall down to 15. Those are not ready yet. Those who are ready for the compensation plan are ready to go anywhere. I'm praying for somebody here. That any power that wants to waste your labor shall be scattered in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud. Now in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Open your Bible to this. The next scripture which the man of God taught about is found in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 from verse 10, which says, But after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who calls you to share his eternal glory in union with Christ, will himself perfect you and give you firmness, strength, and a sure foundation. Now in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Open your Bible to this passage. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Very, very interesting revelation. 1 Peter 5, 10. If you are there, say yes. But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, after you have done what? Suffered a while. Meaning, to settle you. And here the word to settle is to appoint, or to fix, or to resolve something definitely and conclusively, or to put you in your desired place, or to place you in order to give you rest, or to give you rest and to make you stable and get you established. Therefore, the Lord shall settle you by fire and by force. Bellion. Because the Bible did not promise you that you will not suffer at all. So in this world, ye shall have tribulations. So, but be of good cheer. Have overcome the world. You say, after that ye have suffered a while, then it will make you perfect. It will establish you. 
it will strengthen you and then it will settle you settle is to appoint to fix to settle is to resolve something definitely and conclusively to settle is to put you in your desired state to place you in order to give you rest to bring you rest is to make you stable and to get you established that is what it means to settle unbelievers may be using the language but it's a bible language unbelievers may be saying settle me now ah, settle me settle me it's just, it's just like that our friend they say false fruit offering he didn't want to give he collected it he wanted to give it before but the devil ministered to his brain while he was coming from work and he didn't want to give it again so what did he do he put the money inside his stockings and wore shoes on it and it was he, he was going home he came down at Yaba bus stop immediately he came down from his bus two FT men were standing by him oh my yeah said to what said to what said to what said to what so what do you mean they said to what so ah oh money the money is ah, don't have any money on me do you have any money on me? Do you have any money on me? So if you think there's money on me, search me. There's no money. Search pocket. Say, so, Amaya, Babata. The fact that the man pointed at his shoes, he was destabilized. But he did not understand how that child of the devil knew that the money was there. Ah, he said, ah, you have no right to take my money. Ah. And they brought out a knife. Say, so, well, do you want to lose some blood here now? So bring it out. And he started shouting, ah, ah, excuse me, people, like, ah, look at these people that are harassing me here. And they ah, they are, nobody answered. The people in Yaba bus stop just faced their business. They took that money from him. Simply because he too wanted to steal it from God. So, unbelievers will be using like they said to me, said to me. But really, it is a Bible language. What you've read there about Nebuchadnezzar is a perfect description of divine compensation. This is God rewarding an unbelieving nation for this good service they had rendered to God. God is a faithful God. And because of the faithfulness of God, there is nothing you do in the house of God that will go like that. There must be a reward. God often rewards some good works later in order to make the reward better. I prophesy on the life of somebody here. Your season of divine reward has come. Any good work or service you have done, either for his kingdom, or for mankind, or for other people that you don't even know, shall certainly be fully compensated. And the reward shall be far greater than your expectation. I prophesy upon you, that every machinery that needs to be set in motion for you to receive your divine compensation shall be set in motion now. In the name of Jesus. Say, so where is it? I was not even born again. Not a shadow of God. But yet, because it was God's instrument to attack Tyre, he besieged the place for 13 years. And he had promised himself a good plunder, a good booty, but he didn't get any. So God had to reward him of his 13 years of hard labor to encamp against a city for 13 years it's not a joke but the tyrants were able to escape so God now compensated him by giving Egypt today the story of many Christians is like that Nebuchadnezzar working, working, working and they are not adequately compensated Satan is working behind the scene to rob them of the sweat of their sweat Many have done many good works for mankind and for fellow human beings and for God, but they are yet to receive the necessary payback. If God could be so concerned about Nebuchadnezzar, an unbeliever, and he rewarded the man without the man even asking for it, how much more will he compensate his people who are serving him with their heart? For many people, their blessings and compensation have already been given by heaven. But they have been, those things have been held by the forces of the enemy. I command that enemy that is holding the compensation of anyone here to lose his hold in the name of Jesus. If you are here in this service this morning, 
and you have been laboring for years without good results by the power that establishes the heavens and the earth I command your story to change in the book of Esther chapter 6 the man of God also taught about the king honoring Mordecai by ordering Haman to get the royal robes and the horse and put the robes on Mordecai then he should lead him through the city square Upon doing that, Haman hurried home, covering his face in embarrassment. Therefore, remember that God has promised to humiliate all your enemies. In the book of Esther chapter 6, Esther chapter 6, we see an interesting scenario. Interesting scenario, Esther chapter 6 from verse 1. If you are there, say yes. If not there, I will wait for you because it's important <laughs> that you follow this teaching very well. Are you there? Esther chapter 6. On that night, the king could not sleep. He commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigtana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on King Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. Look at him. His labor was recorded, but not rewarded. But that night, the king had trouble sleeping. And then he said, Bring the records. And then they found that two people had tried to assassinate the king and Mordecai went and told them. They just wrote it in the book but everybody forgot to honor him. Mordecai saved the life of the king. Mordecai was not immediately rewarded. It was just recorded. Unfortunately, a man, the son, enemy of the Jews, wanted to kill Mordecai and destroy the people of God. Unknown to him, God was walking behind the scene. So the Aman that was planning to kill Mordecai, kill the Jews, was the one the king now ordered to dress Mordecai in the robes of honor. Very humiliating experience. God will humiliate your Aman. <laughs> that your Aman is very weak. <laughs> and those who should remember you, that they are forgetting it now, they will lose their sleep until they remember you. God is a God of compensation. Mordecai was compensated later in order to be compensated better. No good work will be lost. Reward will surely come. Rahab the allot that kept the spies who came to spy the promised land. She was rewarded. She was rewarded. By the time they took over the land, she got a reward. So there is divine compensation. That woman used to see Elijah just passing by. Said, I perceive that this man is a man of God. Let's put a small flat as part of our house. So anytime he's coming, put him in that room. And they put Elijah there. And the woman was compensated. She had a child that she didn't think she could have at her old age. And when that child died, Elijah brought the child back to life. God does reward good works. But the devil prevents so many people from being adequately rewarded. That's why every child of God, we need to fight hard, go into spiritual warfare to deal with these forces. What is divine compensation? Divine compensation is for the Almighty to open your book of remembrance. And that shall happen to somebody here this morning. Divine compensation is for the Almighty God to over answer your prayers. That shall happen to somebody here this morning. Divine compensation is God rewarding you for your past labors of love. That shall happen to somebody here this morning too. Divine compensation is divine overpayment. God overpays you. Divine compensation is divine pampering. God, God begins to pamper you. I see somebody here this morning. The Holy Ghost shall pamper you. Holy Ghost shall pamper you. In the name of Jesus. 
divine compensation is for the Almighty to make up for your past labors. Divine compensation is for heaven to reward you for all your activities. Divine compensation is for Almighty God to redeem what heaven holds you. Divine compensation is uncommon heavenly reward. Divine compensation is award and honor from heaven. Divine compensation is divinely programmed honor to reward your labor. I prophesy upon your life here this morning, whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, receive your divine compensation. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Say, Oh God, Allah! Set you me by fire! In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare. Your voice is not loud enough. Ali Katanda. Makanta Setende Keyaba. In Jesus' name we pray. So God is not a debtor to any man. He compensates. Still on the subject of divine compensation, the man of God also taught about Hebrew chapter 6 verse 10, Matthew chapter 5 verse 10, and Job chapter 42 verse 12. And finally he also talked about Psalms chapter 126 verse 4, whereby he said, that God will compensate our tears with joy and happiness. 126. Psalm 126 verse 4. 126 verse 4. If the Lord had brought you to this service this morning, then it means that he has already positioned you for great blessings. Amen. Psalm 126 from verse 4. Turn again our captivity, O Lord. As the streams in the south, they that sow in tears shall do what? Shall reap in what? In joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. God compenses our tears with rejoicing, He turns our sorrow into joy. He says, Whatever you sow in tears, you shall reap in joy. Meaning that those tears, the tears you are shedding in your prayers, not the tears you are shedding because you think life has treated you badly. Not the tears you are shedding, say, this is unfair, this is unfair, this is unfair, this is unfair. This is unfair. Why is life so unfair? From which book did you read that life is supposed to be fair? Life is not fair. But those tears you are shedding in the sight of God, he will replace them with joy and happiness. <laughs> There's nothing wrong when you pray to God, you're praying in tears. It's okay. But what God does not want from me is the pity party. Sorry, this is what is happening. Why me? Why me? Why? Am I the only one? Those tears don't bring anything. But when you pray after the order of Anna with tears, God compensates with joy. And the way he will do the compensation, it will mesmerize your enemies and disgrace your Goliath. <laughs> Turn back to the book of Job chapter 42. Job 42 verse 12. God is not a debtor to any man. Job 42 12. So the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she asses. God blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning. God compensated for everything that Job had lost. You may be going through water and fire now. People may even be riding on your head now. They may be spitting at you now. I say you useless man, useless woman. But God will soon usher you into a wealthy place. The amen is not loud enough. In Matthew chapter 5, we're talking about God of compensation. We're talking about divine compensation. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Matthew 5, 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye 
when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven so God gives great reward for every suffering we suffer for him he says eyes have not seen see ears have not heard See, neither has it entered into the heart of man what the good Lord has prepared for his people that's why somebody like me I've made up my mind that I must make heaven it's a decision he said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. He said, it has not even entered into the heart of man what the good Lord has prepared for his people. That's why somebody like me has decided that when that heavenly choir shall be set up, I'll be there to listen to the music. Because everything man is running about here for sinks into its significance once you don't make it to heaven. God will reward his people. This is a very interesting thing. Not only this, God promised that those who are embarrassing us, trying to harass us, he will revenge. He said, vengeance is mine. I will recompense. God compensated Joseph, Daniel, David, and many others for the humiliation they passed through. I see people here this morning that which you have passed through that have left a very bad scar on your life shall become the instrument of your testimony. In the name of Jesus. The God of divine compensation. Listen, beloved. The Bible is not your arithmetic book. It's not a book of calculation. In your mathematics or arithmetic, they will say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. 3 times 3 is 9. Bible mathematics is different. You say 2 shall become 1. What kind of mathematics is that? One? At least 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. Bible mathematics. He said, one shall chase 1,000. Two, by simple mathematics, they're supposed to chase 2,000. He said, no. He said, two shall chase 10,000. That's Bible mathematics. We need to believe the word of God. Look at what it says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Hebrews 6, 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of law, which ye have showed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So say, God will not forget you. won't forget. It may look as if the world, everything working around you may not bring solution, but it's a lie. Bible mathematics is completely different. That widow in Second Kings chapter 4, don't bother to go there now because of our time. That widow ran to Elisha. Say, Elisha, I'm a widow. And, my, and you know my husband. You know that my husband served God with all his heart. You know that I was a good man. Say, but debtors have come to arrest us now. Say, what shall we do? Elisha said, get vessels. Borrow vessels. Not a few. Say, borrow many. The woman started borrowing vessels. Who said, ah, this, man, this woman is crazy. There is famine. There is no food. This woman is borrowing vessels. What does he want to do with the vessel? What is what kind of thing is this? I'm sure some will give her the pot and say, Madam, are you are you okay? Why are you gathering empty pots? People will have gossiped. Say, hey, what a pity. She's gone mad. Gathering empty pots. But by the time the oil began to flow, the Bible said the oil just kept flowing until she had no vessels again. She sold the oil, paid off her husband's debt. And she had enough. That is Bible mathematics. The Bible is not your economic book. Principle of economic demand and supply. Demand and supply. It doesn't work like that. Somebody could be sitting down here now. And within the next 24 hours. Your story changes completely. And you that nobody could reckon with today. All of a sudden within 24 hours. Bible mathematics has changed the story. There are 21 people staring at me this month. You will handle millions for God. <laughs> that your amen is not loud enough. <laughs> now that you want the money just to be boasting that you have money, but to sow into God's work. You sow it into God's work. 
One man in the United States was watching television and he saw one Reambonke's crusade in Africa. The man was touched. So he called his pastor. The pastor, how much is it to organize one crusade like this in Africa? The man said, I don't know, but uh, I will find out. When he found out the answer didn't come on time, he just issued a check of one million dollars to the Abonkis ministry. Since the pastor did not, could not come up with the figure on time, the person who issued that check is a believer. After he had issued the check, the pastor now came back to me and said, oh, Yes, 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 you asked for information about the Abonkis crusade. It will cost $750,000. He had already issued a check of one million dollars. He says, okay, let them use the 750000 $750, to organize one crusade. Then the 250000 left, let them put it in the next crusade. There are people here this morning. That will be your testimony. Your amen is not loud enough. There are people here this morning. The Lord said, I should tell you that he will give you a voice. Where members of your family never had any voice. He will give you a voice in the name of Jesus. Joseph brought his two children to Jacob for prayer. He had positioned the elder one Manasseh by the right hand of the father and Ephraim by the left hand. Believing that the father would lay hand, right hand on Manasseh, left hand on Ephraim. And the man that wanted to do the prayer cannot even see very well. Although he could not see very well, the Almighty was inside of him. Then he crossed his hand. He crossed the hand. He crossed his hand to put the right hand on Ephraim and the left now on Manasseh. I have a word for somebody here. I don't really know who the person is. But there will be a divine crossing of hands that will change your story. There will be a divine crossing that will change your story. That will change your story. In the name of Jesus, there will be a divine crossing of hands that will catapult you to greatness. And that crossing of hands shall manifest. It shall manifest. In the name of Jesus. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Allah! Set you me by fire. Open your mouth and say. The man of God finished by declaring some prophetic prayers. He said that where you are matters a lot. That is the divine location. Being in the right place at the right time. In Jesus name we pray. If you are following me this morning shout hallelujah. So when Joseph found that the father had crossed the hand not so my father not so not so this one is the elder one not so the man who is saying not so he too has forgotten that it was number 11 but God bypassed number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 number 5 number 6 number 7 number 8 number 10 and put him number 1 God bypassed 1 to 10 in order to settle Joseph God will bypass some people to promote you God will overrule the ones of the enemy to promote you. And every power saying not so, not so, not so, not so to your breakthrough shall be permanently silent. Light your amen be loud. Thank you, Jesus. You know. <laughs> I started life as a small boy uh, in Akure. I don't know where that, whether that motor park is still there. But in the motor park is surrounded by all kinds of shops selling music. And sometimes when those people start playing their music at the garage, people will start dancing, putting dust into the air. That Akure garage. I was a small boy there. There's a song I used to hear in that garage. I, don't, I didn't really understand fully what it meant, but I, 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 I love the song. It was later I began to understand what is my interest in this song. I loved this song as a child, but I don't know why I was singing it. Ibiari o kakikbe milo. Ibiari o kakikbe milo. Ori kim for me. Edo kim do me. Otutu kim meja la leodo. Ibiari o 
Amen. Now, uh, it was when I grew older, I became born again, I began to, why do I sing this song? I just, whenever you like, start shouting my name. Your shouting will not bring me any harm. I prophesy upon you. Where they say they do not want to see you, they shall see you. They shall see you. Where they say they don't want to hear you, they shall hear you. Where they say they don't want to know you, they shall know you by fire. Who am I talking to here this morning? Let your amen be loud. And you should know that the greater your destiny, the harder your task. And every power arising to stop your star shall die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because when God puts you at the front, nobody can pull you back. When God opens a door, no man can shut the door. And then when God shuts the door, no man can open that door. There is a divinely appointed place for your compensation. And you will locate it in the name of Jesus. But then, there comes a small problem. Where you have to now listen to me carefully. I'm about to put this to a close. Every divine compensation has a location. Where you are matters a lot. God told Elijah, go to the brook of charity. There! I will feed you. There was no water, no food. And God said, Go to the book of Cherry. There, there, in that place. That is the forward, that's the address. That I will feed you there. Elijah obediently went to the place. And God was sending ravens to feed him. Those of you know a little bit of biology. The raven is a very strange bird. Ravens do not feed even their own babies. Ravens also are carnivorous. They eat meat. God put meat in the mouth of a thief to go and give to <laughs> Elijah. Because he was in the location God wanted him to. God is an expert at using the ridiculous to do the miraculous. So he gave it to Elijah there. Ravens that they themselves, they, they like meat. I'll put meat in his mouth to go and give to somebody else. And he delivered the meat there. If the raven had got into that brook of charity, uh, look for Elijah. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Elijah has come for the burial of his own. Where is he? Elijah is somewhere in the Kurudu dancing at Owambe party. Where is he? Elijah has gone back to his village to turn over the body of his father that died 70 years ago. The raven will just swallow the meat. He says, God, the person is I should deliver it as a satan. He's not here. Can I eat it? Because the Bible says, the word that comes from my mouth shall not come back to me void. But Elijah was in the right place. You shall be in the right place at the right time. Your blessing has a geographical address. Geographical address. May you not jump out of your Noah's Ark. If any animal jump out of Noah's Ark, it will jump into disaster. Something strange happened one day. They didn't know me at all. I was at Heathrow Airport in London. And one man was talking to another man. That man seemed to be a pastor. From his, the way he's talking. But his, the person he was addressing was not a pastor. I was walking behind them. And they were talking. He said, brother, uh, which church do you go to now? I said, well, I don't have anywhere in particular. I said, ah. I said but you were going to MFM. I said, yes. I said, I've left MFM. And I was following them. And the brother said, you left where? You left where? I say, ah, ah, ah. I say, MFM. There, they teach the Bible. They teach prayer. They talk about deliverance, which most churches don't talk about. They talk about heaven. They talk about holiness. They talk about spiritual warfare. Hey, not only that. I say, if you are looking for a wife who can pray, that's where to find them. You won't find them in all those churches. If you are looking for a woman who can pray, that's where to find prayer, prayerful women. And they are not ordinary prayerful women. They are beautiful women too. I was walking behind them. Walking behind them. I say, brother, <laughs> say, if you have left MFM, say, you are finished, you better prepare for hellfire. I was behind them. And they were saying all these things. Until they walked off. The man said, okay, thank you, brother. I think I will consider going back. 
he had jumped out of his Noah's ark. And when you jump out of your Noah's ark, you leave the forwarding address of your blessing. And when the angel comes, he takes your blessing to the address where you are expected to be. But if you have left that address, he gives it to somebody else with a permission from heaven. I pray that you will not jump out of your Noah's ark. We serve a God of compensation. Moses started life in a rough way. But God wanted to compensate his parents. Those who wanted to kill him were those who looked after him when he was a baby. God was feeding Moses by the hand of his own assassins. Pharaoh did not realize that the Messiah he was trying to kill was being raised in his own house. The enemies of Moses, despite Moses, Moses was fully grown. While Pharaoh was going to the street to kill babies, he had he was looking after Moses at home. I have a word for somebody here. Those who want to kill you shall protect you. And I have another word for someone here. Those enemies that are pushing you, they will only succeed in pushing you to your breakthrough. So don't be afraid. Say, well, I don't want my battery so hard. Why well, my battery is so hard? My battery is so hard. Why? Some are crying, my battery is so hard, my battery is so hard. Why? The greater your destiny, the harder your battery. Nobody uses military tank and 20,000 soldiers to go and attack one man who is sleeping under the bridge. Because it's of the, the, the one man will finish him up. But when you are a one man army, which war against you? I was praying for a lady many years back. Immediately she entered into my office. The Lord said, son, a great woman is standing before you. Try your best to help her. And I started giving her prayers. Pray this, do this, do that, do this, do that. Everything was going well. Until one day I gave her one prayer. The prayer is called bringing judgment against the strong man. I said you should wake up at 12 midnight and start the prayers. 12 midnight she stood up and started praying. I started praying. All of a sudden as the prayer was going, she showed that something was tapping her at the back. She wasn't sleeping. Tapping her at the back. She looked. I was a huge tall creature. I said, okay. Let us negotiate. You stop that prayer and we we'll leave you alone. Because those prayers, they are harming us. That all the soldiers they have are dead. That's, but she should stop now and negotiate. The woman said, Negotiate? Say, Yes, let us negotiate. Say, I know you want to marry. We will let you marry. I know you want to get a master's degree. You will get it. Everything that the prayer request of the sister was in the hand of the strong man. So you will have it. The sister said, Look here. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no negotiation. Say, huh? No negotiation? Okay, you will see. He clapped his hands three times. Pa, pa, pa. The whole of our room was filled with strange creatures. Some with the head of crocodile, some with the head of lion, some with the head of all kinds of things, and they were ready, getting ready to attack her. The prayer that I say, pray from 12 to 12 30 in the midnight. It was 6 a.m. she could stop because the battle continued. She now came and said, Sir, where do they come from? Why me? The greater your destiny, the harder the battle. No military will roll out tanks, will roll out submarines, roll out fighter jets to go and fight one man who is sleeping on a mat by the side of his uncle. I pray for you this morning. That every power arising to stop your star shall die. In the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you. That God will open your eyes. To see your destiny location. I also pray. All the wrong, wrong people that are in your life. Wrong, wrong people. The Lord will make them to exit your life. That is a place. The Bible calls it a wealthy place. That is also a farming place, a desert. I prophesy that you will locate your wealthy place. And anyone in this service this morning, if you are operating in a cursed field, you are operating in a cursed field, get out of the cursed field in the name of Jesus. Masika Ponteraka. Get out of the cursed field in the name of Jesus. So every word of God has 
an appointed place. An appointed place. So that you can be divinely compensated. Your compensation too is tied to some appointed people. I pray that your helpers of destiny will locate you. Your compensation too is tied to appointed time. That time has arrived in your life now in the name of Jesus. Every crisis raised against you shall fall for your sake. I prophesy sweatless breakthrough, sweatless favor, sweatless blessing, sweatless testimony upon your life in the name of Jesus. And one final prayer for somebody here. Every power objecting to your deliverance shall die in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet, beloved. Rise up on your feet. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. If you are here this morning and you are not born again, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. The prayers I want you to pray now will do you no good. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. So wherever you are, why all eyes are closed, just raise up your right hand. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus and see what I'm going to say after. Say, Father, the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that short prayer with me, immediately we close. Just find a way to the altar here so that we can pray more with you. Something is about to happen now. There is a prayer, the Holy Ghost, which said we should pray seven hot times. Seven hot times. That may be the only prayer we are praying here this morning. But your violence with that prayer. The desperate roar of your voice will certainly bring you 24 hour miracles. Can I hear the sister say, I shouting this after me? My father, set you me by fire. Can I hear the sister say that? Let me hear the brothers roaring like thunder. Everybody together now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare. Ria Pali Casanta. The Catende Rabo Center. In Jesus' name we pray. I, somebody just pray that prayer. This is Sunday. By this time tomorrow, the story of your life will have changed to glory. Yeah. Open your mouth and pray it again. Basati ali katenda yaba. Jesus name we pray the power of God shall fall upon 11 persons listen beloved there is an organ in your body they say is bad there is an organ they even say they can't know whether it's there or it's not there but right there where you are within the next few seconds the power of God will fall upon you and the divine surgery shall take place in your life and the organ shall get back into position. That's the first person. That's number two. Three. Four. What's happening? Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's right. Receive that new womb. Eleven. 
Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and pray the daughter. Masita Likatandayaba. Today is today. In Jesus' name we pray. Satanic stones in some people's bodies have been melted away. Satanic stones blocking the breakthrough of many have been melted away. This is number four. Open your mouth and pray. name we pray. <laughs> Somebody is praying that prayer with violence and with power. The Lord said, I should tell you, at all your benefits that have been caged, they have been uncaged now. <laughs> Number five, open your mouth and pray. Must be divine settlement. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody is in this service. You started a fasting program yesterday because of a situation you are facing. I have a word to you from the Lord that that situation has been disgraced this morning. We pray. Those who have been laughing at you, you have person over there. Very soon, they are coming to ask you, Where can we serve the Lord your God? Open your mouth and pray to God. That's all for now. If you like such kind of videos, then consider subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing to your friends. Thank you and bye-bye.